In this lesson, we're going to go over Simpson's rule for approximating definite integrals, and we're going to compare it to the trapezoidal rule. So Simpson's rule states that we start with a function f of x, which is continuous over a closed interval a, b, and we let n be an even integer. Now we'll see why it has to be even in a second. Then what we do is we divide the interval a, b into n subintervals, each of these subintervals being of width delta x equaling b minus a over n. Then we have this result. The definite integral from a to b of our function f of x dx is going to be approximately delta x over 3 times this quantity. So notice the pattern f of x 0 plus 4 times f of x 1 plus 2 times f of x 2 plus 4 times f of x 3 and so on and then we end with 4 times f of x n minus 1 plus 1 times f of x n. And so you'll notice that this is very similar to the trapezoidal rule. If you think back to the trapezoidal rule, the only difference with that rule was that in place of this 3 right here we had a 2. And then we had the pattern 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, and then we ended with a 1 for our coefficients. So instead of a 4 here, the trapezoidal rule had a 2, 2, and instead of this 4, we had a 2 for the trapezoidal rule, and so on. So all the 4s were 2s, and then we ended with a 1 also. So it's very similar to the trapezoidal rule, just as easy to use, but as we'll see, it's much more accurate. Now also notice that you can calculate the nodal values x0, x1, x2, and so on using this rule right here. So x0 would be a plus 0 times delta x, or x0 is just a. x1 would be a plus 1 delta x. x2 would be a plus 2 delta x's x3 would be a plus 3 times delta x, and so on. And also notice the uh, pattern for the coefficients up here in, uh, in front of the functions. They follow this pattern for Simpson's rule 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2. And then you must end with a 4, 1. So that's important to note. That's why n has to be an even integer. If you notice with um, this rule, you start with a 1, 4, and you must end with a 4, 1. And because of that, the n must be even. The trapezoidal rule didn't have that restriction because we didn't have a pattern like this for the trapezoidal rule. Now let's take a look at a few examples. So let's approximate the definite integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over x dx using 6 partitions and using Simpson's rule. And then we'll also calculate the same answer using the trapezoidal rule and compare them. So let's first of all notice that for this problem our delta x is going to be 3 minus 1 over 6. or just one-third. And so then our nodal values, we can draw them like this. So we start with one, and to get all of our nodal values, we just have to increment by one-third. So one is three-thirds, and so this one will be four-thirds. and there are all of our nodal values, all of the xi's. Now by Simpson's rule then, 
and so there we have that so that's what we have to evaluate now now notice the pattern that we have notice we have a delta x over 3 right here and notice our pattern 1 4 2 4 2 4 and then we end with a 1 in front of the F and now we just have to evaluate this now the uh, once again the um, F of 4 thirds is nice to evaluate remember our function is 1 over X so 1 over 4 thirds is going to be 3 fourths and that's going to be the same for all of these we just have to flip these that's nice for this particular function and so what we end up with is this and there we go now if you evaluate this on your calculator you can easily do that and you'll see that you get and just taking that out rounding that to six decimal places that's what we have now let's compare this to a, an actual answer obtained from a calculator now remember that this is something we haven't studied yet but remember the um, the antiderivative for 1 over x we discussed this earlier it's the natural log function and that's build a function that is built into your calculator so this is the ln of x and you can evaluate this on your calculator you'll get the ln of 3 and evaluating that you'll get and that's also rounded to six decimal places now let's um let's recall that for the trapezoidal rule what we got for our approximation was this now for the trapezoidal rule if you want you can easily um, modify this to uh, get your answer for the trapezoidal rule all you have to do is um, change this 3 to a 2 right here in which case this would be 9 would become a 6 and you just change the 4 here to a 2 change this 4 to a 2 this 4 to a 2 and then evaluate this and that would give your trapezoidal approximation and if you remember uh, what we get there is and so that was the uh, result the approximation that we got for the trapezoidal rule and if you compare these to what our calculator gave us back for a highly accurate approximation the calculator is is very accurate you'll see that the Simpsons rule is a much higher has a much higher degree of accuracy than the trapezoidal rule does in fact if you look at the error between the two just take note that for the Simpsons rule our error is approximately and for the trapezoidal rule our error So you see how much smaller the error is for the Simpsons rule versus the trapezoidal rule. And so in general that's going to be true. The Simpsons rule gives us much much better approximations to definite integrals than the trapezoidal rule does and it's really not any harder to use. The only disadvantage that the Simpsons rule has is that you have to have an even number of nodes let's take a look at another example now so here we're given a table of values and we want to approximate the definite integral from a to b f of x dx using Simpson's rule now in this case our a is 0 and our b is 3 so we're actually approximating now we have to notice what our delta x is well in this case uh, our b minus a let's put that down here our delta x is going to be 3 minus 0 divided by well how many um, partitions do we have well we have 1 
two, three, four, five, six partitions. Notice that this would be x0 right here, and then this would be x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6. So you start with 0, we get to 6, so that's our number of partitions for our sub for our interval 0 to 3. So our delta x in this case is going to be 1 half. And you can easily see that, of course, look, you go from 0 to 1 half, 1 half to 1, 1 to 1 1.5. So of course these distances are 1 half. So now using Simpson's rule, our approximation is going to be as follows. Now we just have to take note what each of these function values are. Well, that's given to us in the table here. So f of 0 is 1.3, f of 0.5 is 1.7, f of 1 is 2, and so we just need to put all these numbers in place of our function values and then evaluate on our calculator. So what we get then is, noticing that this is 1 sixth, And then we just have to evaluate this on our calculator, and what you'll get is... And so that's what we get for the uh, Simpson's Rule approximation to this definite integral. And you could do the same thing with the trapezoidal rule. The only thing you would have to change would you would, is uh, this 3 would become a 2, and all of the 4s in here would become 2s. And then your trapezoidal approximation would be, so this one is our Simpsons, and this one is our trapezoidal approximation, and you see they are close to each other. Now we can't really compare the accuracy of these two because we don't actually know what the function f of x is. We're just given a table of values, so we can't exactly evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus. But it would generally be accepted that this, accurate, this uh, answer, the Simpson's rule approximation, is more accurate than the trapezoidal approximation. And that concludes our lesson on how to use Simpson's rule.